you're tuned in to the Believe in Arizona podcast. Hello, Bear Down Believers, and welcome into the show. I'm your host, Matt Reynoldson, and this is the post-game edition of the Believe in Arizona poddcast following the Wildcats' 102-44 to victory over Old Dominion here at McHale Center. Yep, here at McHale Center. I'm up here in the rafters just talking over the game a little bit after that. Arizona trouncing, which was the fifth largest margin of victory for a game in school history. Pretty impressive performance by Arizona against a team that is not very good, but... You know, Arizona looked pretty good all the way throughout. So we'll talk about this game. We'll go through what we liked. We'll go through the pristine defensive and rebounding performance that we saw from Arizona today. And we'll look a little bit ahead to Wisconsin next Friday night. And then eventually that Duke game, which is the next home game coming up here. They have it up on the marquee November 22nd at 8.30 p.m. here at McHale Center. Before we get to all of our content on today's show, I want to remind you to please like and subscribe to the show over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, tune in or wherever you get your podcasts. And the video versions of all of these will always be uploaded right here on my YouTube page at Matt underscore Reynoldson. All right, this was an extremely impressive performance by Arizona once again. And starting out for the second straight game, Arizona went the entire first four minutes of this ball game without allowing a point. So that means if you've ever been to a game at McHale, which I'm guessing you all have, that Arizona fans were standing up until the opponent made a basket. Impressive run to start this game, you know, getting out to that double digit lead very early on. And it was about setting the tone defensively, which I think is the greater theme of today's game. Let me go through some of these stats right here for Old Dominion in this game. 18 of 57 shooting, 18 turnovers in the game, and the rebounding margin was massive in this game. Uh, you know, Arizona had 23 points off of those those 18 ODU turnovers, 58 points in the paint. You know, the rebounding margins were absolutely unbelievable, 59 to 28. That's more than doubling up ODU on the glass. And Tommy Lloyd made a good point after the game as well that this is a Monarchs team that grabbed 22 offensive rebounds in their game on Monday night or Tuesday night, whenever they started play this past week. And tonight they grabbed nine offensive rebounds. So that was a real emphasis for Arizona, dominating the defensive glass. They also grabbed 24 offensive rebounds, got a lot of second chance possessions. And to get a 58 point win at home in a game where it didn't feel like they played that well, that was the big thing of this all. It didn't feel like Arizona played a pristine ball game. I mean, the shooting numbers were pedestrian, you know, just a little bit over 50 percent. But it it did feel like a bit touch and go there. It felt like they were, you know, hovering in that 42 to 45 percent range, missing a lot of shots. Um, you know, it did end up pretty efficient, but 38 for 75 from the floor, eight for 22 from three, 18 for 29 from the foul line. Really the only blemish for Arizona in this game. But the fact that they could go into the locker room with a 29-point halftime lead. The fact that they could extend that all the way to 60 points at one point in the second half. You know, the starters looked good. The backcourt looked okay. The front court looked amazing. And it was kind of the flip-flop from what we saw Monday night in the season opening win over Canisius in that those backcourt guys, the three starting guards and Jaden Bradley, Caleb Love, and KJ Lewis all played extremely well on Monday and gave us a look into a backcourt that will contend to be the best in the Big 12. Well, the challenge was laid on the table this week for the front court to play better, for Tobey Awaka, Mo Krivas, and Henry Vesar to play better. And they did. They, they did. It was an extremely impressive performance, led, of course, by Awaka's career high 18 points in this game. He was 8 of 10 from the floor, grabbed 15 rebounds. That's a career day for him. Certainly a career high in points. So that was extremely impressive for Tobey Awaka and really liked what I saw from him. Mo Krivas only playing 12 minutes, but did get subbed into the game in the at the, about the three-minute mark of the first and second half. But when you have the hot hand like Awaka in there playing extremely well, and Henry Vesar also coming off the bench and playing extremely well in 20 minutes. He was 4-10 from the field for 10 points. You know, when you have guys playing like that, there's no reason to lean on Krivas so much, especially after after he's coming off, as Tommy Lloyd said, after the game, a six-week absence. But this game was so much all about 
defense and rebounding. It was extremely impressive all the way through to see what the Wildcats were able to do. And I don't want to overreact too much for, from two games where Arizona definitely outmatched the opponent, which they should have. You know, not a lot of teams have just such an easy time with these, we'll call them preseason games. Yeah, they had exhibition games, but not a lot of teams have just a real easy ramp up like Arizona has shown in their last two games. I mean, a 58 point win today following that uh, 30 plus point win over Canisius on Monday. You know, some teams get tested. Even the top teams get tested by inferior opponents at home. And some things are touch and go. Things were touch and go for all of two minutes, maybe today. I think Old Dominion cut the lead to uh, they had a seven zero scoring run, and at the thirteen minute mark of the first half, cut the lead to I think six, five or six points, and that was as close as it got the rest of the way. I mean, just extreme total dominance from the Arizona Wildcats, and we saw things get more efficient on offense as the game went along, and that grew from a really backbreaking defensive effort. I mean, this was so impressive to see kind of throughout the game. And for the first half, especially, uh, you know, I really liked I just really liked what I saw from Arizona. You know, it's uh, that, that, let's go through these first half stats because they were extremely impressive. Old Dominion was nine of 29 from the floor in the first half, two of nine from three. Uh, Arizona, 19 of 39 from the floor, um, four of 11 from three. So it, it wasn't a super impressive first half offensively, but they did get to that 50 point mark. But it was just that suffocating defense and the rebounding that was really that really kind of set the stage for what Arizona was doing in this game. 31 rebounds to 13 in the first half, crashing the offensive glass, suffocating ODU. Only 29 shots in the first half allowed is a pretty impressive defensive number because if you watched the game, ODU was chucking up shots late in the shot clock. And even the looks they were getting at the rim weren't good. You know, they were one for their first six layups. And that was not uncontested layups. They weren't just missing bunnies. Everything was contested by Arizona's seven footers in Crevis and Vesar. And then Awaka obviously playing great all the way throughout this game. Super physical on defense, um, but only committing one foul. Super physical on the glass, like we mentioned, those 15 boards. Tobey Awaka was super impressive, and if he plays like that, this Arizona front court is going to be a menace to deal with in Big 12 play. So we asked Tobey a little bit after the game what kind of unlocked about him in this career-high scoring effort, uh, You know what he liked about his defensive performance, and I asked him a question that I thought he gave a really interesting answer to as far as this team defense finding a way to guard all five positions, put the emphasis on being able to guard all of the floor, and that's going to translate to them winning Big 12 games. So take a listen to what Tobe and Tommy Lloyd had to say about that after the game. You know, I've really been on these guys to step it up defensively. I think defensively we've been, you know, we've been good. You know, the last couple of years, the numbers say we've been good, maybe even better than good. Um, I want more. I want more. I want more out of this team um, on that end of the floor. And, you know, I, I was really on them. You know, th this week, because I, I want to establish that standard, you know, for our program. And uh, I think we have a can be a very, very good defensive team that we can hang our hat on that side of the floor. And I think in order for us to get where we want to go, that, 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 that that's going to have to be an absolute. So um, so I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with the progress, but I look forward to watching the film and getting back into practice and, and grinding on them again, because I know that we got to make sure our defense can travel. Uh, you know, you know, going into the Big 12, defense is going to be a really big key for us. Offensively, we know we're talented, but defensively, to win games on the road, you know, in those tough environments, we have to be sound defensively. And obviously, uh, uh, honestly, it's just a credit to our scout team, you know, just pushing us every, you know, single day during practice. Guys like Grant, uh, Champ, Sven, those guys, you know, they make it uh, really tough for us. So when it comes to the games, you know, um, you know, it's, 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 it's uh, much easier. Some other things that stuck out to me. We talked about the rebounding margin overall 59 to 28, which is well more, well over doubling up. But I think overall, the defensive rebounding mindset to keep them off the offensive glass, to keep the Monarchs off the offensive glass, was extremely impressive all the way throughout. I mean, we saw Arizona come in with a mindset that they were going to crash the defensive glass. They were not going to try and prioritize getting out and running over getting those defensive rebounds. And I think we saw that come to fruition today. And I think we saw maybe a little bit more in the Canisius game and certainly at other times during the Tommy Lloyd era, teams really prioritize transition, really prioritize getting out and running. And it's 
grab the rebound and go. Now, today, and with games like this, when you are focusing on not giving up the offensive glass, which you'll have to do in the Big 12, you'll have to focus on not giving up the offensive glass. When you have games like that, it takes four or five guys crashing the boards. It takes guards crashing the boards and not getting out and running, so that way you don't give the opponent those second-chance opportunities. So I think Arizona developing very early on in the season that it can be a transition team, but it can also be a crash the glass team is extremely important when it comes to Big 12 play. But in the interim, in the immediate, the Wisconsin game next week, the Duke game in two weeks, because those are teams that can hurt you on the offensive glass. And you keep teams like that in the game if they get those second chance points. Old Dominion had almost no second chance points today, no second chance opportunities, only 10 for the game. Arizona dominated them in that category, 23 to 10 overall. You know, the offensive rebounds were great. I think you need more than if you get 24 offensive rebounds, I think you need more than 23 points to show for it. But at the same time, uh, Arizona showing on the glass that they can be a dominant rebounding team. It starts with Awaka, obviously, with his 15 rebounds in the game. That was a team high, but it was an overall team effort today in getting the guards to the glass, and a lot of guys grabbed boards. It was pretty impressive. A lot of guys grabbing boards. You know, you see Trey Townsend with three three boards, Caleb Love, three boards, KJ Lewis, three boards, Anthony Adele Orso, three boards, Carter Bryant, four boards. You know, these guys had the ability to get out and run and get out and go do it in transition. But today they decided we need to establish exactly what we want to be on the glass as a rebounding team. And because of it, Old Dominion did not have the same success they had a few nights ago when they had 22 offensive rebounds, just nine, as I mentioned, nine offensive rebounds for the Monarchs for this game. So here was the coach's thoughts on the overall rebounding effort, what Arizona wanted to do and what Arizona needed to do on the glass, both defensively and then the second question, offensively as well. Rebounding something that we, we we harp on every single day. And, you know, in theory, if you're not in a ton of rotations defensively, you know, your, your positioning is closer to, you know, between your man and the basket. So it's easy to cut them out, you know, or get a good block out and you have inside position on the glass. So those kind of details stack up and, um, and, you know, I mean, we were on our guys. I mean, you know, Old Dominion last week or, you know, whatever it was when they played, uh, I think Monday, they had 22 offensive rebounds. And I watched the film and I'm like, hey, you know, to me it looked like it was a very uh, focal part of what they were trying to do and they were very intentional with how they were offensive rebound. And so, you know, we really challenged our guys. Your offensive rebounding? Huh? Sorry, Ryan. Uh, do you feel like with your offensive rebounding, does this maybe, you know, you shoot 50%, but with the, the, the footbacks you have, Maybe more potential there than some of the teams you've had. Well, I said I love offensive rebounding. I mean, offensive rebounding is a great insurance policy on offense. You know, you you run your offense, you try to get great shots. You know what I I want? I mean, I got on Caleb and JB. You know, one of those possessions. I think they both shot faked themselves out of threes, and we ended up almost at a shot clock violation. I'm like, guys, like we get under ten, let it rip, and then let's get six hands on the offensive glass. I mean, that that's that's what we want to do. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always going to be a staple of what we do. I think we have, you know, great potential, you know, with our depth inside and some of our athletic wings to, to, to be a great offensive rebounding team. Like this year, I think even before, we like, that's been part of our identity, like rebounding and like deflections. But this year, I feel like we have really, like, coach have really emphasized it. And I think we've been, like, showing it the last two games, and now we got to show it against big teams, too, that we were able to offensive rebound, defensive rebound, and get deflections every day, every night. So we've talked about the defense and rebounding. Let's talk a little bit about the offense because I think it was impressive for Arizona to be able to, without the benefit of those fast break points, only 23 for the game, to be able to get into their offensive sets and break down some of that defense with good shot making. I mean, 102 points is nothing to slouch at, you know, nothing to sneeze at. Arizona made 18 free throws, um, 18 of 29. So we'll not talk about the efficiency from the free throw line, but 18 free throws. So it wasn't like it just all came from the charity stripe. Arizona made shots eight threes on 38 overall makes in this game it's an efficient game and i think what they did late in shot clocks and having a number of guys that can force the issue from the guard position i think is extremely impressive we saw good ball movement and we saw guys settle into their roles a little bit more than we saw in the first game you know it it came up in the post game press conference i noticed it as well that the newcomers maybe didn't have their best night on monday today they did 
you know, Anthony Delorso doing what he did coming off the bench and playing a little bit of backup point guard minutes as well. Um, I think that's something that they could unlock in the future because he's just kind of a heady passer, you know, really good vision on the court and then obviously looks for his shot. So he's a good spot up shooter. And with the way this team rotates the ball, I think he can be a guy that can bring the ball up the floor and still at some point in the rotation spot up and make a shot. So I think with the way they with the way they roll, it's not taking any opportunities out of Anthony Delorso's shot. They're not you're not taking the ball out of his shot making hand by having him bring the ball up the floor because they rotate it so much and get it to the top of the key and get it to places where guys can spot up from any of all five positions. You know, we saw Henry Vazar continue to make threes tonight. And that was something that we knew was going to be unlocked because of what we saw in the exhibitions. But guys at all five positions can drain triples. Caleb Love had back to back threes. Um, you know, Carter Bryant played well with the with uh with a couple threes that he made you know this is a team that can shoot this is a team that can get hot from the outside and i don't think we'll see anything this year i mean knock on every wood surface that you could possibly knock on that i don't think this is a team that is going to get into the same position that they were in la in march when you missed that many threes against a clemson team and it, it, it ends up sinking you in the game because i think this team has different ways to attack the basket different ways to score and it's not so much of a straight up vertical from my view this is just my amateur view on things it doesn't feel like such a straight up vertical inside out game. It feels like the inside out moves the ball around the key a little bit more than it did last year. So I think leaning on the post is important, but Arizona has a number of guys that can lean on in there now that are all pretty good passers. And what we've seen from Krivas, Vesar, and obviously Tobey Awaka with what he did tonight. Um, the assist numbers were pretty staggering as far as just uh, as far as just an overall um, differential. You know, twenty one assists for Arizona. That's a good number. I, I like them at that number. Twenty one assists on the thirty eight made baskets is something you want to see. But uh, just two assists for the game for Old Dominion, and we were talking about it in the post game press room that. I don't think they had an assist for the final 30 minutes of this game, probably for the final 32 minutes of this game. So Arizona cutting off the passing lanes extremely well, um, keeping guys from going to the basket and pretty much every make that Old Dominion had, and there weren't many, there were only 18 makes for the Monarchs in the entire game, were basically just creating their own looks. So that was something that Arizona did really well with the rotational defense from that standpoint and just an overall defensive effort, I think was really impressive. But it didn't let the defensive mindset of this game dictate what was going on on the offensive side, if that makes sense. The offense was efficient in its own ways. And yeah, they played better when they played well on defense. The offense looked better when they played well on defense, but it wasn't like the defensive, this rash of turnovers or anything like that was leading to just a ton of fast break. And you mentioned that because Arizona was sending so many guys to the defensive glass. So you're not going to get a lot of fast break opportunities when you do that. Um, but I think guys had active hands. I think guys didn't focus on conserving energy. Maybe I think it was just a very overall impressive performance as far as an efficiency standpoint. And that's, that's what you want to see. If you're an Arizona basketball fan, look, taking a 360 degree view of the first two games of the season, you expected to win them and you expected to win them by a lot. But the efficiency numbers in both of those games and especially stepping up the efficiency in today's game after some rough moments for a little bit in Monday's opener, winning this one by 49, holding an opponent to 44 points, which was an overall low for the Tommy Lloyd era. It's actually the lowest amount of points allowed in a game since San Jose State in 2019. This is a team, and this is a team that looks to be ready to go on the road, even just after two games. And that's what you wanted to see from these first couple games for Arizona. I mean, they look like a top five outfit. They are deep. They have guys that they can bring in. They have different ways they can hurt you. They have size in areas where other teams don't have comparable size. They have great guard play. They have good guards coming off the bench. You have a secret weapon, maybe, that we're figuring out in Carter Bryant, who had his first double digit game today in 12 points in his second game of the season. I think Arizona has a lot of ways to beat you, and that really, really can challenge teams. Um, coming down the stretch in the Big 12. 
look, it's a long season. It's a long way to March. And this team and this program is judged on what it does in March. But right now in November, it's it's off to a pretty good start. And I'd be pretty confident that Arizona is going to be able to go into Wisconsin next week and pull off a win. And then you're looking at a potential top five matchup against Duke here on the 22nd. And then from there, you get a trip to the Bahamas. You settle in a little bit for a December that includes a game with UCLA and then the start of your Big 12 season at the end of December. I mean, this is all sort of ramping up towards that Big 12 play. And there's a lot to get excited about because it looked so good in the first couple games. Old Dominion, not a very good team. They didn't show a lot today. They certainly didn't play very well. They certainly didn't play up to their standards. But Arizona had a whole lot to do with that. And if the Wildcats continue to play like this, things are going to look a lot better moving forward. Um, just they're going to look like this moving forward. And yeah, the, the competition will step up. The games will get closer. They'll have to figure out how to win games in crunch time. But this might be Tommy Lloyd's best team. And that starts on the defensive end. It starts with what we saw today from an efficiency standpoint. It was impressive to see how active the hands were, how well in position guys were cutting off those passing lanes, how they were in position for the defensive rebounds, as we mentioned, only giving up nine offensive boards to Old Dominion in this game. It all kind of came together. It feels like it all kind of came together for Arizona. And now the competition steps up. So... What do things look like when things are hitting the fan? Because Wisconsin's going to go on runs. Duke's going to go on runs. It's not going to be this just sort of easy breezy let's go that Arizona's seen in the first couple games. And they know that. And they did what they needed to do on the floor to set themselves up for success. Got all the guys in, emptied the bench at the end of the game in both games. It's an efficient win, exciting win. Getting the home crowd on their feet and McHale early on in the season is always fun. But now, 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 their next game at home is going to be against Duke. And there's already a student ticket waiting list. You know, people have are trying to get priority points by going to other games, other sporting events, so they can get into the Duke game. It's a full lottery system for student tickets for that game. It's going to be an amazing atmosphere at McHale when Cooper Flagg comes in here with the Blue Devils, um, obviously, especially after Arizona beat Duke at Cameron Indoor last year. So there's a lot to look forward to with this team. And I think that that was a little bit of the tenor of the press conference as well in the post game. in that, yes, two wins under the belt, 2 and 0 on the season, 102 to 44, 58 point win. Yes, yes, yes. But it's time to look ahead. It's time to look forward. Couple notches in the belt. Now go earn the big notches in the belt. And here's what the team had to say about that after the game. You know, great test for us. See, you know how our offense carries on the road, how our defense carries. Um, and just playing, you know, in a in a tough environment. We've had two, you know, great uh, home games, two great showouts. Um, you know, so uh, Playing on the road is going to be fun. It's going to be a great test for us to see where we are. I mean, you're going to continue to learn about your team all year. Like I've told you guys all along, I love who we got. And and I, I, I know where we're going, but I really like who we're walking in with. And um, so so I, I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm, you know, we, we might have a tough night or two, and that'll be okay because these guys will learn from it. But um but all in all, I, I think we're trending in the right direction, and I think we're ready for the challenges that lay ahead. All right, there's obviously not a lot to question after a 102-44 to victory, especially at home, you know, riding every wave of momentum. But there's a few things on my mind in that Arizona is going to need to figure out before Big 12 play starts in December. Number one, who is the backup point guard? Um, you know, you need to figure out exactly who's going to be in the minutes rotation because Conrad Martinez playing 10 minutes in this game, I think that's probably about his max. Um, uh, he played a lot in the latter stages of the game, did have a team high and assists. You know, he's 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 a good player on the floor. He's going to be a guy who's going to provide a spark for Arizona in some important games this season. But I don't know if he can be a true rotational player, as in a guy that comes in to spell Bradley at the 12 or the 10 minute mark of the first half. So you need to figure out who is going to rotate in at the backup point guard position. We saw a little bit of KJ Lewis do that today. Uh, I like that look. I think it's an athletic look for Arizona. And I think KJ Lewis is a smart player, especially with the ball in his hands. But that's something that Arizona is going to need to figure out. Um, as well as uh, I think I want to see a little bit more from Trey Townsend. You know, he was efficient today, four of six from the field, uh, made one of his two free throws, had nine overall points, just three rebounds. Um, he was in the right spot a lot in the right time, played pretty good defense. But 
I want to see more from Trey Townsend. I'm wondering when that breakout game is going to be for the Oakland transfer and the reigning Horizon League player of the year. So we'll see what we get out of Trey Townsend. We'll see what the Wildcats get out of a lot of guys in their front court. And then how does Arizona's front court rotation come together? Because we are seeing Crevis come off the bench three minutes into the first half, three minutes into the second half. How does Tobey Awaka look if he's coming off the bench and you're starting Mount Mo uh, at the five? That Maybe that looks a little bit different. Maybe uh, Awaka takes a little bit more time to find his sea legs if he's coming off the bench as opposed to starting and really being able to impact the game right away. So how long do you stick with Tobey starting at the five? How is that post rotation going to come through? How many minutes is Henry Vesar going to get at that spot? And, uh, and, you know, what are we going to see from Trey Townsend? And then at the three position, um, what are we seeing from Carter Bryant coming off the bench? I think we saw a glimpse today of how good that he can be in a Wildcats uniform. You know, a couple incredible steals. He had a breakaway double clutch windmill slam that had shades of him winning the dunk contest at the Red Blue game. So I'm really excited to see what Carter Bryant can do because he is a guy that is supremely athletic, long, silky smooth shot, good defender in the right position. He can be aggressive. He can be passive. So I think we saw a little bit unlocked of what Carter Bryant is, but now we're going to see the freshman go into his first road environment. And I've been to games at the Cole Center in Madison. Uh, it gets rocking in there. It's a tough road environment. And then seeing Carter Bryant take on Cooper Flagg, the phenomenal Duke freshman here coming up in two weeks. Uh, we're going to learn a lot about Carter Bryant over the next couple of weeks. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. And then Caleb Love, um, you know, Caleb Love, again, efficient today. Um, he really kind of showed, OK, he's back on Monday, uh, made a couple back to back threes, but just two of five for me on the arc today, quiet 10 points for him. Uh, you know, I'm not worried about Caleb love by any means, but, um, Will he be ready to be the Caleb Love that we saw at Oregon last year when he scored a career high 36 points on the road in Eugene? Will he be ready to be that guy that steps up and takes over the game? I think Arizona has a lot of guys that can do that, has a lot of guys like that. But uh, when will we see Caleb Love have to take over a game? Because preseason first team All American, you know, he's going to have his opportunities to do that. And I think um, as his efficiency grows, as his feel and flow within the offense grows, and as he continues to grow, as a defender, um, I think he will have plenty of opportunities to take over games. And it's, it just should be really exciting for Arizona fans as well to see what number one can do now. It's, it just feels so weird still to see him, you know, without the number two jersey and without the dreads. He's turned over a, a new leaf in his career there. Um, but, you know, excited to see how Caleb continues to progress and, you know, if he can be that guy come crunch time. Because when you're on the road at Iowa State and Kansas and, you know, against Houston and some of these other incredible teams in the Big 12, you're going to need your superstars to step up and make big shots. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing if he can do that in crunch time this year, because I think Arizona has a lot of closers this year. It's not just all on Caleb's shoulders. I think this team has a lot of closers. I think this team has a lot of great defenders. I think this team has a lot of guys that play the game the right way. They're strong on the glass. They are well coached. Clearly they come out with intensity. They come out with energy. So now the only question that remains is what happens when they get hit in the mouth? And I have a feeling at some point in the next two weeks, we're probably going to see Arizona get hit in the mouth. That's the fun of college basketball, right? It's just the ride in the wave, ride in the wave all the way until March, until we see what this Wildcats team can do in March madness. But through two games, A+. Plus. That's a passing grade. Arizona looks fantastic. Um, 102 to 44 in this game, obviously against an overmatched Old Dominion team. But you can't play these two games any better than Arizona did. No sweat, no drama, nothing. Getting all the guys on the bench into these games and getting the crowd rocking here and just getting things set up for when the schedule intensifies over these next five games. All right, that'll do it for me here from McHale Center up here in the Upper Deck Raptors for the Believe in Arizona podcast. One more reminder to please like and subscribe to the show. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, tune in wherever you get your podcasts and give me a subscription on YouTube at Matt underscore Reynoldson. That's where all these videos will be. But one more time, your final score from this game, Arizona 102, Old Dominion 44. We'll be back early next week to talk more Arizona basketball and Arizona football coming off of bye week. That'll do it for me. Have a great rest of your weekend and bear down.